Ronald Acuna Jr. and Juan Soto both went yard yesterday, and Juan Soto is trying his best to catch up in the NL MVP race. Also, Fernando Tatis Jr. made some history. The Cubs made history as well. They scored another 16 runs after scoring 20 runs the game before, and Guardians players, they are reportedly upset with the front office. The general manager for the Guardians had to fly to Houston to address the players and kind of go over the plan for the rest of the season. Yeah, players are not happy. All of that in today's MLB recap, a series in which we recap every single game almost every single day. And a reminder, use code FUZZY on SeatGeek if you're going to any baseball games or concerts anytime soon. Let's talk about the Phillies and the Marlins game first because Miami, they traded for Jake Berger and they celebrated with $5 burgers. That's how you market. Now Miami, they got torched in the first half of this game. They went down five to nothing after six when newcomer Josh Bell, he teed one up for his first as a fish. Then Jazz went yard. Was that back to back? It was. Jazz Chisholm Jr. has 24 home runs and 27 stolen bases over his last 107 games. That is mind-boggling. The Fish, they kept on fighting, and there it is. Jorge Soler, he charged up for a game-tying home run, only to have David Robertson implode again. He's been awful in his brief stint with the Marlins. Brandon Marsh, he put the Phillies up by two. Both teams, they were trading runs back and forth, back and forth. The Phillies, they went up by one in the 11th, and they gave Josh Bell a single on that. I don't know. I expect my shortstop to make that play, but we're talking about 2023 Trey Turner. He's been terrible. He has like an 81 OPS plus, not the best defense. So it's tied up. We need 12 innings for this one when Jesus Sanchez, he eventually walks it off in the 12th inning. That is a big time W for the Marlins. The Marlins, they can move into a wild card spot if the Brewers lose this next game. I almost never do this, but for this one, I feel like it's necessary. We're going to skip all the way until the ninth inning. Milwaukee is up by one and they have Devin Williams on the mound. So that's the closest thing to a guaranteed win as you're going to get. Not so fast though. The Milwaukee defense looked like us the first week of MLB The Show 23. That new throwing meter was just tough. You guys all know what I'm talking about. Two errors in the ninth inning cost Milwaukee the W with the winning run scoring on an errant throw from rookie Andrew or Andrew Monasterio. That's an awful way to lose the game. So Milwaukee fans, they can only hope and cross their fingers that the Reds lose again. Now, before we show the full-blown implosion by the Red staff, another one, look at Spencer Steer and Joey Votto teeing off. Spencer Steer as a rookie has 16 home runs, nine stolen bases, and an almost 120 OPS plus. Joey Votto, he launched his first of two home runs and a second came right after this swing. That's a two-run home run from Christopher Morel, who actually made history. He became the fourth player ever to hit a home run from every single spot in the lineup in one season. He was hitting second, and of course, he hit that home run. Joey Votto got those two runs back and then some on a three-run home run. He has three home runs and seven RBIs over his last three games, but here comes the Chicago Cubs. Swanson, another home run. He has four home runs over his last three games. The Cubs, they scored a bunch on doubles from Christopher Morel, Jan Gomes, Mike Talkman. When Ian Happ, he stopped the double streak with a long 430 foot blast, his first of two. Do not go anywhere because Mike Talkman with another double. Mike Talkman is hitting 330 with 11 extra base hits and 21 RBIs over his last 20 games. The 2023 Cubs became the first team in MLB history to have 10 extra base hits and five home runs in back to back games. The Cubs, they're just three games back to first place, and ladies and gentlemen, they're feeling themselves. The Diamondbacks were starting a rookie in Slade. Chichoni or Kikoni, I don't know how to say his last name, I'm sorry, but he got his first career strikeout on a nutty play, a foul ball directly into Jose Herrera's marbles, but he held on, that is a strikeout. Arizona, they ended up giving their rookie starting pitcher a lead, but Slade, he ran out of steam in the fifth inning, he allowed two runs, one on a triple from Brandon Crawford, and then a game-tying single from Izan Diaz, who I didn't even know was still playing professional baseball, but shout out to him. J.D. Davis, he did his thing in the sixth and played a two on a double. Enter Camilo Duvall. No strikeouts on this one, which is very surprising, but he got three outs on eight pitches. He has 32 saves on the season. That is a big time W for the Giants. So the Giants got a W. The Marlins got a W. They're both fighting for a wild card spot. The Padres erupted for five home runs in Coors Field and Haseon Kim, he went 425 feet. And before we talk about Juan Soto, check out what Haseon Kim has done over the last few days. He's hitting 390 with five home runs, seven stolen bases, and 15 walks to only 10 strikeouts in his last 20 games. Those are prime Juan Soto numbers, just with better defense, and he's faster. Now, speaking of Soto, there he goes, 450 feet on his 23rd home run, and now it's El Kraken time. Gary Sanchez went 440 feet in the sixth, and then went 440 feet again in the ninth inning. He has 14 home runs and 167 at-bats. That is a home run every 11.9 at-bats. Tati 
Tatis, he made history on that swing. His three-run home run was his 100th career home run. He is the fourth fastest ever to 100 career home runs, and this next sentence is insane. He is one of 12 players ever with 100 home runs and 65 stolen bases by their age 24 season. He missed all of 2022 and a bunch of games from 2023 and the shortened 2020 season. I mean, say what you want. Tatis is an all-time talent. Gary, just for fun, he drove in two more on a single. The Padres have won two in a row, and they've almost outscored opponents by 80 runs this year. That's pretty good. A's fans, close your eyes. The Dodgers also put up double-digit runs. Again, I'm sorry, Oakland fans. Few Future Hall of Famers Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts, they got it going. Freddie on an RBI single and Mookie Betts on his 29th home run. He is a 140 OPS plus as a Dodger and a 134 OPS plus as a Red Sox. I mean, it's apples to oranges. He was a doubles and stolen base machine in Boston with all-time defense. You can't really even compare the two players. Is that Ahmed Rosario? Yes, it is. He's so good against lefties, so that makes sense. A two-run home run for Ahmed. Miguel Rojas swatted his first home run in what feels like decades. There he is, the first of 2023. And after Jason Hayward smoked his 11th of the season, Enrique, he made it a 10 spot. Who has the best offense in baseball? Is it the Braves, the Dodgers, or is it the Rangers? Speaking of the Braves, they were facing off against the Angels, and like five different teams are fighting for that final AL wildcard spot. The Jays, the Angels, the Mariners, the Red Sox, and the Yankees. We're going to talk about all of their games right now, and I hate to say it, but Lucas Giolito, he has looked completely useless thus far as a member of the Angels. That's a three-run no doubter to Ronald. He is the 12th player in history to have a 25 home run at 50 stolen base season, the first since Hanley Ramirez in 2007. I miss Hanram. Michael Harris. He drove in two on a single, and then the pain really set in. Riley, there's a long 430-foot two-run blast, and then Matt Olson. He now has 37 home runs and 91 RBIs. They go back-to-back. -back. Lucas has allowed 12 runs on five home runs in his first nine innings as a halo. Albies, he had an RBI double in the eighth. He has... 47 extra base hits and 76 RBIs. The Braves have an absolute juggernaut offense. They beat the Angels 12 to 5. The Red Sox and the Mariners. This game was actually all Boston at first with Grady Sizemore Jr. aka Jaron Duran belting his seventh home run in the third inning. Not in the third inning, but his seventh home run of the season in the third inning. Starting pitcher Cutter Crawford, he put Seattle in a blender. He blanked them over five just to the Boston bullpen. Yeah, about that. Cal Raleigh, he ran into a baseball. He has 17 home runs and 93 games. Remember, he had 27 home runs last year. Pinch hitter Cade Marlowe, he clutched up for Seattle. The rookie ties it at three. And then the 2022 AL Rookie of the Year stepped up. J-Rod completed the comeback with an RBI single. That was followed by an RBI single from A. Eugenio Suarez. And then J-Rod stealing home. He's one of 10 players ever with 45 home runs and 50 stolen bases by their age 22 season. The others on that list, A-Rod, Griffey, Mike Trout, Tatis, Ronald Cunha Jr., just some bums. Andres Munoz, he is looking crispy in that closing role. He strikes out two. He has three saves. Honestly, I think he could be even better than Paul Sewald. So we have some pretty terrible news right before this Yankees game. It was announced that Domingo Herman will be missing the rest of 2023. He is going to the restricted list. The Yankees stated that there was an incident a couple days ago involving some off the field kind of substance abuse is kind of substance things. I don't even know if I can really say what exactly happened because YouTube might demonetize me. But yeah, all we can really say is prayers up to Domingo and his family that he gets the help that he needs because he has been an absolute wreck off the field for quite some time. The game started with Wander Franco belting a two-run home run off of Garrett Cole and fans, they were actually chanting, fire Cashman. Fire Cashman right when Wander Franco was crossing home plate. But thankfully, Anthony Volpe and company, they responded. Anthony had a two-run oppo taco the other way. 14 home runs and 20 stolen bases is crazy talent considering he's hitting 214. Stanton, he powered up for a glorious Stantonian blast. A three-run home run to right center. He has 393 career home runs. Can he get to 500? Let me know in the comments down below. Garrett Cole, he ended up going the next six frames without allowing a single run. He went seven innings, eight punch outs. He's going to win the Cy Young if he keeps this up. He only allowed four base hits. He has a 2.6 ERA. The Yankees beat the race 7-2. That might have been their biggest W of the year. Toronto is trying desperately to end their five-game home losing streak, and it's not going to be easy because they suck against the AL East, and they're facing the mighty Orioles. Now, lucky for them, Springer, he singled in one, and Yusei Kikuchi, he was yet again very effective. Now, he did allow the game-tying run in the fifth, but he came out after six amazing innings of one-run ball. He only walked one, which is huge for him. He needs one single run from his offense, and oh my, my. 
my baltimore's bullpen did something that you almost never see they hit back-to-back -back hitters with the bases loaded and things got even worse when jorge mateo made an error and toronto grabbed another run i think that a dfa for jorge mateo might be coming eric swanson he struck out two he has three saves on the year as the jays do end their five game home losing streak they beat the orioles four to one if you're a cleveland fan this next sentence is very exciting shortstop gabriel arias drove in brian rocchio and oscar gonzalez and if you're an Astros fan, this next sentence is even more exciting. Chaz McCormick is very good at baseball. His two-run home run in the second and a solo home run in the sixth, those were all the runs that the Houston Astros scored yesterday. But even then, that's all that they needed. Chaz, he's up to 15 home runs, and he's been even better than George Springer. Ryan Presley, he struck out two in the ninth for his 26th save. Now, after the game, players on the Guardians were not happy. They were confused as to why they got worse at the deadline. Technically speaking, when you trade Ahmed Rosario, Josh Bell, and Aaron Savali for one player that's going to contribute in 2023 that is Noah Syndergaard yeah Jose Ramirez and company they're not going to be happy because the prospects Kyle Manzardo and Khalil Watson they're probably a year or two away from making their debuts so yeah that irked the players and GM Chris Antonelli whatever his name is he had to fly out to Houston and calm everyone down because I guess there's a vision I mean it's a weird vision. I'm not going to lie. Corey Seager was back in the lineup after a brief stint on the IL. He was taken on the White Sox and he made his presence immediately known. That's his 16th home run in 67 games. Then he had an RBI single in the second. Texas ran it up to nine runs after a two run double from Travis Jonkowski. And that's a long home run off the bat of Josh Young. Make it double digit scoring as Marcus Simeon lifted a two run home run, his 16th of the season. All while Dane Dunning, he was throwing a gem. May I interest you all in 11 strikeouts on just one run over nearly eight innings. He's got a 3.1 ERA. That is a super rotation when you factor in Max Scherzer, Jordan Montgomery, Nathan Evaldi when he's back and healthy, Martin Perez, Andreini, Dane Dunning. I mean, that's crazy. That's a deep rotation. The Rangers win 11 to one over the White Sox. Another game that wasn't very close, the Cardinals and the Twins. The Cardinals, they did all of their damage in the first three innings. They scored seven runs off of Joe Ryan, who has been terrible lately. Tyler O'Neill, his power is coming back. Jordan Walker, he now has 10 home runs on the season. And Lars Nupar, he tagged Joe for his 11th home run of the year and finally Alec Burleson he made it a four home run day for the St. Louis Cardinals that one being a three run shot it makes me so sad to see what happened to the Cardinals because they could have been so good I love their offense and I like Lars Nupar a lot as well look at him robbing Carlos Correa of extra base hits that was a sick catch in center field Dakota Hudson he was nearly perfect he went six shutout before allowing a monster three run tater to Matt Walner Matt Walner now has eight home runs and a 135 OPS plus in his first 44 games he needs to play every single day I don't think that Joey Gallagher returns in 2024. The Cardinals beat the Twins 7-3. Cole Reagans was going for his first career win and luckily he got to take advantage of the woeful Mets and he made it look easy. Michael Massey and Bobby Wood Jr. combined for the first three RBIs of this one and Cole, he took care of the rest. Cole Reagans went six shutout and the best part, not the eight strikeouts, which is insane. He only walked one hitter the entire game. Drew Waters, he socked one out. I really like Drew Waters, by the way. And Kansas City, I mean, I don't know if this is me being dramatic or me being hyperbolic, but they might have just put the nail in the coffin for the Mets 2023 season. Here we go, the Pirates and the Tigers. Riley Green ripped a home run, his ninth, and uh, I feel like I haven't said the name Javier Baez in weeks, but there he is with an RBI single. Right before Zach Short drove in two more, he made it a three RBI day in the sixth. He has eight RBIs over his last 21 at-bats. Erod, he was pretty good. He only allowed two earned runs over six innings, and it's crazy that he could have been a member of the Dodgers, but he rejected the trade. He's just more comfortable having his family in Detroit and not moving around and uprooting everyone. Jake Rogers, who I thought was going to get traded, he teed off for his 13th home run. The Tigers, they went 6-3 to three after Tyler Horton nailed down his first save. So the immaculate grid for today definitely is going to be tougher than yesterday. So let's go ahead and do a quick update on the standings. The Rays, they lost just like the Orioles, so nothing happened in the AL East. We have the Central. The Guardians are down by two games because they've lost three in a row. The Twins, they lost, so nothing changed. The Rangers, they're still fighting at a half game ahead of the Astros in the NL West. The Braves, they're still ahead by 12 games in the NL East. The Reds, they're still a half game ahead of the Brewers because both teams lost yesterday. And in the NL West, the Dodgers and the Giants both won, as well as the Padres. So the Padres are now three games back of the Diamondbacks. In a wild card sense, the Padres are now four games back of making the playoffs. The Cubs are two and a half games back. The Diamondbacks, they got to get it going. They're three and seven in their last 10. They've lost two in a row. They're only one game back. But you have the Marlins, the Brewers, and the Phillies, as well as the Giants, all fighting for those final three wild card spots. In the AL, you have the Rays, the Astros, and the Blue Jays all in it right now. 
now. The Red Sox, they lost, and the Yankees won, so they gained a game. The Mariners and the Yankees are tied at three and a half games back. The Angels are four games back. They've lost two in a row. And the Guardians, they're back to seven games back. So the Central, that's going to be who decides who makes the playoffs or not between the Twins and the Guardians. It's not going to be a wild card spot. All right, the Immaculate Grid. I don't think that Pablo Sandoval played a game for the Guardians, but I know he was on the Guardians. I'm going to save that for later. The Guardians and the Reds, I'm going to go Yasiel Puig, I feel like a lot of people won't get this one, 7%. A 300 batting average season. I'm going to go Michael Brantley. I feel like a lot of people are going to guess this one, 2%. You guys forgot that Dr. Smooth, once upon a time, was on the Guardians. Uh, the Red Sox and the Giants. Okay, maybe I was lying about this one being harder. Wasn't Cody Ross on both teams? Cody Ross was 3%. Oh, this is easily my best so far. The Red Sox and the Reds. Um... Bronson Arroyo. I'm pretty sure that Bronson Arroyo, 31%. Okay, that just ruined my rarity score. 300 batting average for the Red Sox. I could go with Manny. I could go with Big Poppy, Ted Williams. Um, what about someone from back in the day that was kind of sneaky that people forget about? I could go JD Martinez. I'm going to go JD Martinez because I feel like that might be a pick a lot of people don't go with. JD Martinez, 1%. I knew it. Rookie of the year for the Giants. I mean, did Willie Mays play at a time where there was a Rookie of the Year award, a Rookie of the Year for the Reds. I mean, okay, this is actually going to be pretty tough. Wait, Rookie of the Year where he hit 300. I'm going to go Ichiro. This is definitely going to ruin my rarity score. 33%. Um, rookie of the Year for the Giants. Could I go with, um, what was that lefty's name that threw a no-hitter? Again, I don't know when the Rookie of the Year award started, so I'm going to go to a Guardians and Giants player. Guardians and Giants player. I'm trying to think of maybe... Did Cody Allen go to the Giants? I don't remember if Cody Allen was on the Giants. I'm almost positive that Willie Mays won a Rookie of the Year, but I think that Willie McCovey did as well. I'm going to go Willie McCovey. Oh, Willie McCovey, 8%. Okay, I was really scared about that one. Reds, Rookie of the Year. I am stupid. This literally happened a few years ago. Jonathan India, 39%. So my... I mean, I've got one, two, three players in the 30%. The other ones have been pretty solid. I need to come in clutch with a Guardian and Giant. I'm trying to think of pitchers like... I don't... I don't remember Oral Hershiser. Did he ever play for the uh, the Giants? I don't remember Kenny Lofton. Did he play for the Giants? I just have this weird vision in my head of Kenny Lofton wearing a Giants uniform. Like I feel like he was traded to the Giants. I think I remember that from a Jolly Olive video or something like that. Please, Kenny Lofton. Yes. Kenny Lofton, so a 139 rarity score. Not my best ever, but at least we got every single pick. But that does it for today's MLB recap. I hope that you guys enjoyed the finale of the season. It's kind of approaching, so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and don't forget to use code Fuzzy on SeatGeek if you're going to any games, and I'll catch you in the next one.